when you look at like the approach Elise has had to this fight, now I, I saw the uh, the piece that was put out on ESPN and on on Sky Sports where you said like, hey, all this is uh, for you, all this is about getting a belt. You want to be undisputed. Uh, mm -hmm. For her though, she's taking it very personal. Like her approach is like a very emotional uh, approach. Like what what do you make of her taking it that way? Very emotional. Right. I think that's a great word to use. And um, I think that insecurity is very loud and she's been very loud this whole time, you know, laughing at the fact that, oh, you wanted that fight with Terry Harper so bad. And I got that fight with her, took that from you. I didn't want to fight with Terry Harper. I wanted to fight for the WBC belt. So now you have it. Great. I'm coming for you. Now I get to challenge you for it. Um, this is all business for me. But for her, she is taking it very personally. And you know why? This girl, I've been on this girl's radar for a decade. I mean, she never made it to the top in the amateur. So I was and I was always number one. I've been running this division for 10 years. Like I was the top at, in the amateurs um and now in the pros and she never made it to that level in the amateurs but i was always that one on the national team the one to beat she never even got close to it and now here i am as a pro um signed to top rank making my way up beating the champions and she's just she's jealous she just can't stand it she doesn't understand why i was able to climb to the top and she hasn't and she wanted to make some excuse for it and tell me that i'm privileged and blah 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 but this is boxing and the only way to get to the top is by fighting and by winning and that's what i had to do and she's just mad she's mad <laughs> yeah you know like when I said, like when I, I saw that interview that you did and I'm like, OK, I wonder like if, if it's that's the case, too. But is there any part of you also that you feel like she like had a shortcut to like getting a fight with you? Like you mentioned, like, hey, like, look at all this groundwork I've done. And what have yeah. you done? You know, like and I felt like, oh, I wonder if like Michaela feels like, dude, like you didn't earn like your way to anything I like I did. I've said it to her. I said, wow, look, look how far women's boxing can come when you haven't done anything for the sport. And then you can just hop into this huge world title fight with the biggest payday of your life. Um, and she can say that she's been working in silence and that she's been doing the work, but she not not like me. I think that she was just bullshitting. I think that she was kind of half-assing boxing since she was 18 or since she was eight years old, like she says. Um, but I, I didn't half-ass anything. I mean, when I stepped into that ring or into the gym for the first time, like, I dedicated everything to it. I gave up everything. I said, this is this is where I want to what I want to do with my life. Like I want to be the best female fighter in the world. And everything I did was was to get to that goal. And that's what I that's what I've been doing since I was 17 years old, which is late to walk into a gym. Um, but she wasn't doing that. And now she's playing catch up and she wants to make an excuse and say that um, I've gotten here for any other reason, but I've I've gotten here through pure hard work. So uh you know, but this is where we wanted women's boxing to be, right? We wanted women's boxing to be at the point where if you are going to go up and challenge a champion, you're going to get what you're, you're going to get paid for it. You're going to get the exposure, just like any man, any man is going to go up and challenge Shakur Stevenson right now, or Terrence Crawford, they're going to get the exposure because they're going up against a champion. And so this is where we wanted women's boxing to be. We're closing that gap, closing that pay gap. And so as much as I hate Alicia Baumgartner, great for boxing. <laughs> I, I have asked this question to other fighters when there's like this much animosity um, between them and their opponent. So uh, I, I guess I'll approach it the same way. Like, how bad do you want to punch her in the face? God, I keep saying that. I'm like, God, I'm going to punch her in the face so much because she's just running her mouth about things that don't even make sense. At least when I'm talking shit, everything that I say is factual. Like, I really I don't really just it's not emotional. And hers seems to be very, very emotional. Uh, I'm just speaking facts. But. The thing she says really does make me want to smack her. I've never really had this much animosity towards someone I was going, I was fighting. I genuinely don't like her as a person. I would never mm. be friends with her. Girl. I'll never be so no, no hug after the fight, no embrace. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Dang, after sharing all that time in the ring, there, there's always like that that you know, like nah. hey, we went to war together. Nah, nah, I'll pass. Nah. I'm good. I'm pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of which, like uh, the, the trash talk between you and her. Yeah, I, I was thinking like how, how much of that is getting under your skin or, or is like pushing a little button where you just want to like go over and like strangle the person because of like how much they irritate you. I just I, I, I keep things. I'm cool, calm and collected. I don't know how she's going to be when she gets into that ring, but um, I will stay cool, calm and collected. That is always that's how I've been trained. That's how I've been brought up by Coach Al. 
Um, I'm not going to let these emotions get to me. I, I can't say the same for her. She might be a wreck getting into that ring. I don't know what's going on with her, but I'll keep it cool, calm, collected, and I'm going to stick to the strategy and stick to the game plan that we've been working on. Yeah, that's the other thing. You know, you've called her uh, a basic fighter. No, no, she called you a basic fighter, but you've said that uh, you're a more complete fighter. You got more skills, more tools. Uh, I was there in person for your Hamadouche fight, and it was a great freaking fight. I loved it. You know, you, you showed a different side of you. You showed you could bite down and, and mix it up with someone who's willing to do that. With this opponent, I have a feeling you just want to completely humble her and box her and show you show her that she's not at your level, but are we going to see shades of maybe that Hamadouche fight where because of the animosity, the trash talk, you might want to bite down and just, you know, throw with her for a little bit also. Embarrasser. Yes. There's, I, there's definitely in my mind, in my, in the way I see this fight going moments where I'm going to absolutely take it to her and, and show once again, how I can fight in all areas of the ring and how I'm, more diverse and how I have that second, third gear that I don't believe that she has. But again, I'm also a boxer and I'm never going to fight someone the way I fought Hamadouche. It doesn't make sense. Hamadouche is a very unique case because she has a very unique style and she didn't stop coming. Um, Baumgartner is the opposite. She doesn't really come forward. She sort of wants to stay back, lure you in, counterpunch you. And so um, I'm obviously not going to walk right into her the way I did Hamadouche. It's different strategy, different opponent. But I do think that you'll see spurts of that for sure. Because once I get her number, I said, if she, her only her only chance to win this fight is to knock me out because she's not going to beat me on point. She doesn't have a more work, higher work rate than me. She doesn't punch more than me. Um, and she doesn't pressure more than me. She just, it, just look at our styles. And so uh, once I, I feel like once I catch her number and get her timing, then that's it. She's done. You guys will see me kind of switch into that gear. I'm going to do a little role playing here. So uh, I'm going to pretend, or I'm going to, I think if Alicia were to hear that, she would say, okay, c c come forward, watch me catch you coming in and, and trying to slug with me. What, what would you say to that? Um, Go for it. Try. I know that's what you're going to do. We already know that's what you're going to do. I'm not surprised by that. I mean, that's exactly what she's going to try and do. She's going to try and catch me coming in. We know that. Um, but I, like I said, I, she's never fought someone at my level. I'm not Terry Harper. I'm not, not like anyone she's ever fought. She's been able to walk through these girls because she hasn't fought anybody. She hasn't fought anybody. And so I think that her, her downfall is, just believing that I'm not shit and that I'm as low level as her all past her past opponents. And that's not the case. She's going to be in for a rude awakening. I'm at least looking at the best version of Alicia Baumgartner. She's looking past me in every way. You can see it. She says it, she admits it. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at that. That's what she's going to do anyway. Try and do. You're tired of talking about her, huh? I just, yeah, we don't like, <laughs> You have a, a friendship outside of all this like yeah yeah i i you know i would imagine like you can't wait for all this to be over right to just not have to think about uh alicia anymore and talk about alicia anymore and just deal with all that i will tell you because everything that's gone on in this build up and just like having to reschedule the fight this is gonna be one rewarding win like i thought the hamadouche fight i'm like this is gonna be such a rewarding win because there's some fights where it's almost like you feel like you're having to prove yourself all over again to like the public and everyone who you're going up against. And, you know, like you don't get through this, then nothing you've ever done in the past even matters. And so this is definitely one of those fights where like there's no option but to come out on top. And it will be, um, you know, to me, I more so have everything to lose because I've put myself, gotten myself to this level. Um she really hasn't built her career to this level where any one loss would be detrimental. So let's go right back to, you know, the career that she has. So um, to me, there's a lot on the line, but uh, it's going to make this win even greater. Like it's going to be a huge relief. So yes, I do envision coming back here to Colorado belts on my arm, all of it over the stress off me having the performance of my life and just taking that next step in my career. What is that next step in the, in the career after this fight uh, you, that you're envisioning? Big fights only for me. I've always said that. Like, I passed the point of taking any 
warm up fights, baby fights, you know, nothing. Sharpening up fights, none of that. Um, obviously, I want to go undisputed, so um, my team knows that they're going to be going for Choi to try and get that undisputed fight, um, and then up to one thirty five to fight Katie Taylor. That's wow. my. I, that's ideally what I'd want to do, Choi. Mm. Or Pursun, you know, Pursun I hear might fight Choi for the belt. That's her mandatory. So if that happens, I would love to have Pursun on my resume also. So Choi, Pursun, Katie Taylor. Uh, Serrano? I would love Serrano too, but she went down to 126. Mm -hmm. She fought Katie. She fought Katie at 135, right? She did. She did. Yeah. If she wants to come up, you know, that would be a fight. But right now, like, I'd want to go for Katie because she has the belts at 135. And then, uh, but ideally, before I retire, I would love to have that matchup with Serrano because I think, again, that would be a great name to have on my resume. Um, and I think the fans would really enjoy that fight also. So if we can make that happen somewhere, somehow, some weight, then yeah. Serrano is a hell of a fighter. I love watching her fight. She, she mm-hmm. just, she's a very uh, fan friendly fighter. Yeah, for sure. And she's awesome. She's super supportive. And, you know, you, w- you won't get the beef that you're probably getting with me and Baumgartner. But <laughs> that has be been it. entertaining. I, I like it. I love it. it. I think that's what makes people so interested in, in this fight it is uh, the trash talk uh, between you two. Uh, you mentioned Katie Taylor. Um, and, and I know that for a long, long time, uh, you helped out Rhonda um, with sparring for her fights. Chris mm-hmm. Cyborg had a uh, fight over the weekend. She's transitioning over to boxing. And I I, I think they've talked about a Katie Taylor, Chris Cyborg fight. Just your thoughts overall on, on that. And now MMA fighters, women's MMA fighters wanting to get into boxing when it was the opposite five years ago. Yeah, that is a good point. That shows that we've come a long way. Um, Yeah. I heard that Katie Taylor and Cyborg or Katie Taylor and Holly Holm. And listen, I got nothing against Holly or Cyborg. Great. You know, your challenge you're continuing to to um challenge themselves in martial arts and go into boxing and great that's all great for them but do i think that her versus katie taylor would be a great fight no i don't want to see it i think i'm much more deserving of a fight with katie taylor than chris cyborg is but you know that's just the new day and age this is the social media and everything that's going on and these crossover fights mma fighters and boxers i get it it's marketing and it sells and people want to see it um but uh no i think i'm much more deserving of a fight with katie taylor i think i'm next in line for that fight and i think she would agree like who else would you say would be deserving of the next big mega fight with katie taylor i think it's me so if that fight does happen um, I, I guess you wouldn't be a fan of it, huh? No, I'd watch it. I support yeah. that. But, uh, you know, it's, again, it's just because of the media and then, you know, the where the way things are today with all these crossover fights. But, you know, I, I like I said, it's not, it's not us to me. If that happens, it happens. I'm not going to sit over, get over here and cry about it and be mad about it. Um, it is what it is, but, you know, cool. Is it safe to say then that you're not a fan of these exhibition fights or like these Jake Paul fights? No, I under I understand why it's happening. I yeah. do. It's entertainment factor, right? And so where social media is these days, like I get it. It sells. People are trying to make money and people want to see it. And to me, as long as people are continuing to talk about boxing and new eyes are, you know, being put on boxing, then I'm fine with it. I don't care. It's not gonna affect my career in any way. I'm just gonna keep working and keep pushing forward and People can keep talking about Miss Words. Okay, yeah, because uh, uh, that's a very black or white type of thing. It's either when I say that, it's either you're on one side or the other. Either yeah. you're like you like it, or you're like, dude, I cannot stand this. Like, I don't want to see it. They're disrespecting boxing. Ah, like it, it really like it hits a nerve with people. Now, I just don't get mad about things like that. I like, what am I gonna do? It's just I can't control it. So I'm not gonna sit here and get all worked up about it, but. It's just where the world is these days. <laughs> you know, speaking of this fight, it, it's happening on October 15th. It, it got rescheduled uh, with the passing of the queen. Uh, you guys were all there ready to go. Uh, I just, me just being real curious. I, I know like you guys as athletes, you peak during fight week and, and you guys are cutting, you know, the extra two, three, four, five pounds uh, before your guys' weigh-ins. Uh, but for the most part, all the hard work is done. You guys have peaked. When a fight is postponed like that for like a month, almost a month later, like how do you guys even a- approach getting back to your peak when you've already put your guys' bodies through a lot in camp? 
So that's a good point because it's a skill. Like it really is to be able to peak yourself. Um, you know, I have a great team, Coach Al. He's experienced. He's done this with so many champions. And so he knows how to peak me perfectly every time. And that's what we did for this fight. You know, I felt great. My weight was great. And um, it's a whole process. You got a whole whole team get, you know, the nutritionist and the coaching and this sparring, the amount of sparring and the, the recovery time and everything that leading up to it. So, um, you know, we did that perfectly and we had to be careful coming back that we didn't overtrain, that we didn't plateau in some way. And so I did rest. I did break. Um, you know, I didn't work too hard for that for that first week, but then that second week also, you know, just light runs and getting your recovering. I went through a 12 week camp. And so um, wow. I felt my body was, my body was definitely put through a lot in that camp. And so um, I had to recover it a little bit, but now I feel great. We picked up the sparring this week. And so um, it's all coming back. You know, I was a little anxious as an athlete, you're sitting there and your coach is telling, you know, just relax, don't train too hard. Just do this, do that. And you're like, Oh, but I got to fight. But you got plenty of time. You know, we still got three full weeks. Um, so we picked up the sparring this week and had about, we'll have about seven or eight sparring sessions before fight night. And that's all we need to repeat ourselves. Mm, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Cause I, I was thinking about that and I'm like, I don't know. I wonder like how much time do they take off? And then even then, is it like play like a psychological thing? Like, Oh my God, like I, I'm, I took a break for two weeks and now I'm only going to like prepare for like these next two and a half weeks. Like, Oh, is that <laughs> enough time? It kind of does. And then, you know, especially when you're, you're a hard worker and you're motivated and you're whatever, a disciplined athlete, you think that you're maybe getting out of shape, but, and I did feel, I'm like, Oh, I was getting a little anxious, but then, um, got right back into camp. My first sparring session back, I'm like, Whoa, I'm still in shape. And duh, why wouldn't I be I had a 12 week camp, two weeks off is nothing. So, um, but that's just experience, you know, it's experience and things that you have to go through to, to learn how to handle, um, I feel like I've had a lot of experience going leading up into this fight. And so this was um, a little different, but uh, still something that, you know, I've had to do as a champion before. So it's fine. How was that um, the day when you guys weighed in and then they told you like, hey, we're not going to go through with the fight, obviously because of the passing of the queen. But how how was that day? So uh, we I was like jump roping at my last workout the night before weigh-ins right and we knew the queen was sick and whatever but i'm jumping over and i'm finishing the last workout this whole freaking camp which is always like the best right you're like oh last one and my manager comes up to me he's like the queen died i just threw my jump rope down on the ground i was like you gotta be fucking kidding me and i fell in here sorry and then um we get back and you know we're all kind of getting together like what's going on are we going to weigh in still do we have to make weight because obviously we still we're going to have a light dinner wake up and you know cut the water and do all that there was still a process and so they're like just go through with the weight cut you have to go through with the weight cut we don't know yet we don't know they said they'll let us know tomorrow and the next day the weigh-ins were at one o'clock and they pushed them to three o'clock i think they were just really trying to figure out whether they could make this fight work without looking like assholes i guess in the whole country <laughs> i don't know um but yeah i'm laying there on weight i had a great weight cut i was ready to go um just waiting for the go waiting for the call and we got the call and it was a no so i said cook up the food let's eat let's go. <laughs> what are gonna do Cal came up to the room and he's just like Ugh listen, there's nothing you can't, you can't stress over things you can't control. What well, we just going to, you're going to rest. We're going to go back, you're going to rest. And then we're going to get back into camp and, and we'll just be right back here next month. What you going to do? He's just so chill like that. So, um, yeah. What'd you eat? Did you pick out? No, I ate the same meal that I was going to have post weigh in, which was uh steak and baked potato. Oh, okay. That's a, that's yeah. a good meal. That's, I, know, that's... I don't, go out to eat after my weigh-ins because I've been eating so clean in that whole camp and my nutritionist is there cooking for me. I'm not having any bad salts and you go out to eat. You don't know what people are cooking that with. So I still have my meals cooked for me after weigh-ins. Thank you so much for watching this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV and give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it guys.